Today we are taking one last look at this Can-Am Spider from the perspective of someone who rides motorcycles. That'd be me. I have never in my life ridden a three-wheeler like this Can-Am Spider. And this is an F3S. We'll talk a little bit about the specs on this vehicle and we'll talk about what it's like to ride. Now, I'll be perfectly honest, when this first showed up, I wasn't all that interested in it because I thought, you know what, it's not a motorcycle, doesn't have two wheels, it's not my thing. But a couple people that I look up to when it comes to motorcycles told me to reconsider and give it a chance. That would be my dad who builds awesome bikes and Andy Smith who is a really, really good rider. Both of them have ridden these and they told me, you know, they're actually really fun vehicles to ride. This is basically from Can-Am, a snowmobile for the street. That was the intention with this design. Now let's jump on it and ride it. So flipping it on, there's a little bit of a sequence here to get this vehicle started up. So once this warning message comes up on the screen, I have to hit mode here on the handlebar to clear that out, put my foot on the brake, and then I can start it right up. So it's not too bad of a process once you understand what's going on. And if I hit this plus here, which is the shifter for my six-speed semi-automatic transmission, put it in first gear, kick my parking brake off, and now I'm ready to go. Not too bad. Now it is an interesting sensation, just from the perspective again of someone who rides motorcycles, to be sitting on a seat, turning handlebars, but you don't really have to lean. It's kind of a weird feeling. But otherwise, it seems pretty intuitive so far. So I use this little shifter here on my left to flip through gears in the transmission. There's no clutch, so it is very easy to just walk up to and start operating because there's no real learning curve with that. And I just have a single brake. It's this on my right foot. Now, I have to be the one to shift up through the gears, but the bike will downshift on its own like it just did. And I'll get a little temp in this bike before I really go for the throttle. But the shifts are pretty quick. And they're, uh, they're not super hard of a hit either when it goes through the gears. And uh, even for me, a lighter rider, I'm about 165 pounds, suspension feels pretty plush, pretty comfortable. Now, there's a couple use cases for this motorcycle that we'll talk about at some point here, but let's go through some of the basic specs. This is a 1330 cc engine, 115 horsepower, 96 pound-feet of torque. Those are decent numbers in a motorcycle, but this is a lot heavier than the average motorcycle, of course. It's a lot more vehicle, so it's not going to be as fast as your average sport bike, but with 115 horsepower on what is you know, relative to most vehicles, fairly small. And it shouldn't be too bad either. And it is kind of interesting feeling the steering. This really feels like it wants to dart around some corners. And we don't have a ton of turns around here on the Front Range of Colorado. These are mostly pretty grid patterned roads because we're not up in the mountains where we're at right now. But there's a couple turns right here to my left. So let's see if we can feel a little bit of the handling. Yeah, I mean, I would almost describe the steering as being a little twitchy. It's, uh, it's very quick to turn in. You really don't have to give it a lot of input. And you can feel that it does have a decent bit of torque. It's definitely not lacking in that area. But again, I mean, it's just very fast to change direction. And it is kind of interesting feeling the front end, you know, unload one side and load up the other side because that's obviously not really something that you get 
in a motorcycle so it's a very different sensation than what I'm used to but I mean other than that most things about this are pretty straightforward and I think that's a good thing about it so kind of back to talking about the use case for this motorcycle I think if you're a, a typical well I guess this is an auto cycle if you're a typical motorcycle rider then this is probably not a vehicle that would be on your radar because you'd be like me you'd be sticking to what you know yeah, and it's definitely it's not slow if you're a motorcycle rider and you're looking at this as a motorcycle I think you might be put off by it but if you're someone who a maybe doesn't know how to ride a motorcycle and you're not comfortable with using a clutch or you're worried about balancing then this would be a good way to join maybe friends of yours who do have motorcycles because you can absolutely keep up with a group of riders on something like this I know they handle really well I've heard that about them a lot Again, we don't have really great handling roads right here but you can 100% use this to bridge the gap between you and some of your friends who maybe ride if learning how to clutch and lean a bike is not something that you're willing to do another potentially good use case for this is certain people with certain disabilities might find this an easier bike to be on because again it, it just takes a lot of the other factors out of the equation and if those are some of your use cases or maybe if, if this is just more interesting to you than a traditional motorcycle then this could be a great vehicle because again a lot of people have friends who ride and they want to join them but there's those certain barriers to entry this could bridge a lot of those gaps and I think it's good for that and the other aspect of it is is that even though it's not a traditional two-wheeled motorcycle that doesn't mean it it isn't a fun thing to ride now I will say that these are expensive especially these spiders they start over twenty thousand dollars so it's not a cheap vehicle especially compared to a lot of motorcycles because you can get a lot of bike for 20 grand of course this is just literally more machine so you would kind of expect it to cost more <laughs> I got it on the throttle a little there spun up the back tire hopefully that ranger behind me didn't notice but um uh, yeah it's it's expensive no doubt it's not a cheap vehicle that being said Can-Am does also make a vehicle called the Riker that's a really uh, you know half the money I mean they start around ten thousand dollars it's a much smaller smaller displacement vehicle so it's not as substantial as these uh, but that is also an option if you're looking for something less expensive to get you into riding with some of your friends could be a really great vehicle for that now I really have no idea what the limits of this vehicle are so I don't don't want to uh, don't really want to find out here on my first ride and be the kind of thing that I'd much rather do over some time especially again this is an expensive machine I don't want to do something stupid and biff it but it does seem like it's very happy to corner I know it'll corner harder than I'm cornering it on any of those kind of turns so yeah performance wise I think it's a pretty solid machine and comfort wise it's also very solid I got a very plush seat I've got an upright seating position this is an easy bike to be sitting on you could definitely log a lot of time and a lot of miles on one of these especially if you went for one of the Can-Am spiders I mean there's a lot of different trims and some of them have a bunch of extra luggage and luxury features big screens you can add a lot of wind protection and storage to these to make them I mean very very usable machines over long distances I could see the twitchiness of that steering maybe getting a little tiring after a while if you're using this on a lot of long trips but that being said it's I think it's kind of one of those trade-offs if you want a machine that's fun handling and quick to change direction then you're gonna have to deal with a little bit of that kind of thing so let me know what you guys think down in the comments below I'm sure there's plenty of motorcycle riders out there that would 
not want to move in this direction. But I've also seen tons of comments from people who absolutely love these machines because it opens up the world of riding to more and more people, and that's always a good thing. For now, that's all from me. We'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.